All right, if we're going with this vote theme, remember you can approach it any way you want. Because I'm doing sincere optimism in the morning in this afternoon session, I've started an assignment five folder. This was my sketch. And I don't know, I just have an image of like an election worker's donut like stomped in the curb after election day. <laughs> and whatever happens, happens. And that's that's life, right? So this is my illustration. How can I turn this into clean line art? So remember the requirements. We start with a sketch, but then we have to turn it into clean digital lines. Now, we can do this traditionally and then turn that traditional inking into our line art. But I'm going to start by posting my sketch, since that's the first requir requirement. All right, so requirement one. Um, spot. This is all on a theme. So themed spot illustration sketch. So I'm just going to take this little photo from my crop from my camera phone brought onto my computer, drop it in there, shrink it down, like we've done for almost every other assignment. Now what's nice about a spot illustration is your sketch has a lot of energy to it. Even if you were to sketch it digitally, that energy is a strength. This isn't a logo where we're gonna to try to clean up every rough edge, unless you want a really clean look. It's something where you want to embrace the personality of it because that's your visual language. So now, how do I digitally ink that? How do I turn that into clean line art like this, eventually as a vector? Well, we're going to use freeware for it. So we're used to using PhotoP. So let's open up PhotoP. At this one, I don't need to include the link for it anymore. Your computers remember it, so I hope you remember it. And then, I am going to open up a new project and I'm going to set its dimensions. So I'm going to name it Carl Assignment 5 Spot, I'll just say Assignment 5 Line Art. And this is going to be Raster Line Art. And Create. Now I go to Image Size, I probably should have set this up when I created it, but I want it to be in inches. I want it to be around 8 by 10 by around 300. Because if I do digital inking, I don't want the quality of the lines to be a low resolution. And we're going to be using these spot illustrations in post posters on the next assignment. So mine's actually going to be 8 by 14 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Now I'm going to drag and drop my sketch onto that. So it will come in as a smart object and it will scale up. So it's going to get pretty softened, but that's fine. Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to onion skin it by taking the opacity down on my smart layer sketch, just like putting tracing paper over it. And then I'm going to lock that layer and lock the background layer, and then add a new layer on top that I call digital inking. Okay. To digitally ink, you're going to need a tablet, and they're open at the back. And to remind you what the tablets look like, let me turn on the camera here. You're going to need something like this, right, with a stylus, because what we're going to do to digitally ink these is we're going to use the brush tool right there. We're going to use it with the default colors in PhotoP, which is black on top of white, on a new blank layer. And then we're going to set the brush mode to hard round. Okay, and then we're going to, you see the hardness is at 100%. 
We're going to put the size wherever we want. I'm going to do it around 60. And then I'm going to press this icon in the brush options, which makes it pressure sensitive. So when I hit ink lightly, like touching it like a ballpoint pen, it's nice and thin. And when I press hard, like a, a Sharpie, it's nice and thick. And I can do anything in between. Now, once I'm sure that my image size is at a high enough resolution, it is then I can go in and start inking. Okay, and I have this big check mark and I can ink it just like I would with a, with a permanent pen. But you see how wobbly that is? So I can also set this smooth percentage up to, I'd say, around 50%. Going beyond that can really slow it down. But then it can give your inking a little bit more clarity. That's terrible. <laughs> but I'll work on it. So you want to kind of dial in your settings at the right resolution. You want your flow at 100%. You want your opacity at 100%. And you want to be sure you're on a separate layer. So that at the end of the day, like I'll just do one of these little flies. Yeah, my, the smooth is really slowing it down. But at the end of the day, I can turn off those background layers and just have black line art. Also, this is my pessimistic one, so my lines can be a little less inspiring looking and a lot harsher. So this is where you can do kind of the graphic outlines or the hatching or the stippling but what I think you should do is kind of contain your shapes that will make coloring easier so where I have frosting here I don't want to have a dotted line where that frosting overlaps the cake part of the donut All right I want to make sure that that's completely contained and it is now Then I can do little hash marks and other bits. Let's take the smoothing off a little bit and that will allow me to work a little bit freer. So smoothing is great for like the big curves, but it slows down your brush a little bit because your computer is kind of correcting it as you go. But this is made to look really cartoonish and rough. So I have lots of stippling and get some hatching in there. Or oh, little highlights. But this is a, a gutter donut. So those highlights aren't going to be as clean as if it was on a pastry shelf. been sweating out in the street for a while. Hatching would be these kind of lines, kind of indicating where a shadow would be on the inside of this donut hole. And it's easy to overdo it. You can always go back in your history. You can do a lot of Command Z. Control Z if you're on a PC to undo. <laughs> and you can always change your brush size, right? But with the pressure sensitivity, you can see I can get quite a range of brush, brush marks here. And stippling is just the little dots. You can kind of build up textures. It's a fun way to work. 
make sure that you have that pressure sensitivity turned on. Otherwise, they're going to look just like really mechanical dots. But this way, it really does look like you're using an ink pen. You're just going to tap your tablet. So you decide how much fun you want to have in your line art. How sketchy you want it to be, how clean. There's a little crumb. Even though I don't have it in my sketch, I can build it in my line art, like more details on that crumb. Thicken one side of it. Darken kind of the shadows on the other side. I like what's called directional hatching, where you use your lines and you build them up to, to suggest tones, but you do it following along the form of what you're drawing. So you see how these lines are curving around the donut shape. And if you add color to that, you know, it just gives a lot of dimension. The other fly. And now, as I'm in the mood for this really kind of messy way of drawing, I'm going to do the cigarette ash. Now, this is digital inking. This is using the digital programs to make clean, really decipherable line art in a way that has a lot of personality. But sometimes we have difficulty with the barrier of using a tablet. right? So your other option is to do it traditionally. So that is to take your drawing, your sketch, and then to take tracing paper like this. This is called tracing vellum. It's a, a plastic spun paper instead of cotton. And then you use a permanent black ink pen. I'm just using Sharpies. And I have some for you to use to ink. And then you take that inking and you scan it into the computer. And I did that with my Sharpie inking. And we go into the class Dropbox and you'll see this is the scan. So I'm going to download it. And we can do this at the back of the room for you onto our scanner. We download that image and we open it up in Photopea. So let me first put it into my assignment folder and I'll crop it. Now, this scan, we scan it at a high resolution. So this is at 600 pixels per inch. So even though it's with a black Sharpie on clear vellum, you can see where the ink sits on top of the, the woven paper. You can even see where the inks overlap themselves when I start and stop a line and where it gets thicker. So we need to open this up in Photoshop in order to clean it, or in Photo P rather, in order to clean it. So let me do that. But first, let me save this as a PSD file. 
my digital inking.